you better get ready. 2022, the year of God's orchestrated divine breakthrough for your life. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, God's perfect timing, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. And I want to say, pastors, make space for God. It doesn't mean get out of the way. It means discern. I like the word discern. The Americans say it that way. Discern the presence of God. Discern the moods of the Holy Spirit. Musicians, when you lead as well, look for the chief conductor in the service, which is the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, sometimes like a wind, sometimes like a rushing wind, sometimes a gentle breeze. If we want God results, we have to live hooked up with the Holy Ghost. You build a business, your marriage, anything you do. You have to walk sensitively to what heaven gave you. Are you hearing me tonight? We look for answers many places, but we ignore the Holy Spirit. It's like your shadow. He never leaves you. He's always there. Trying to get away from your shadow. The only place you lose your shadow is at night, right? So when, when, when you lose focus of God, it's when you're in, a bad, in the wrong place. You have to stay close to Him. You have to discern Him. You have to honor Him. You have to respect Him. You have to embrace Him. He's the third person of the God and he's not inferior. He's the one to glorify Jesus. He's the one to lead you and guide you into all truth. He's the one to bring to remembrance all things God told you. So how can we ever live our lives powerless if God said you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come? Then we should ask, where's the power? And that leads you to the question, have I received the Holy Spirit? And if I did, how did I lose the power that comes with the Holy Spirit? You have to ask the question. Because if you go to the shooting range and you, and you pull the trigger and there's no bullet that comes out, you know the gun is not loaded. That means some of you are running on empty. Some of you are not in the word the way that you should be in the word. And I don't make this mean to say this legalistically. But if you do bodybuilding like some of you do, if you, uh, some of you do these weird diets that you eat once a day or twice a day. I don't know what you call that diet. Some of you eat five times a day, six times a day, but you all eat except if you fast and pray. But some of you are on a permanent spiritual diet. You never read the Bible. You never pray in tongues. No wonder your spirit is weak and you don't know what the next step is to take. If we go to Ethiopia and we see those children with the big bellies suffering from malnutrition, if you could see on the spirit realm, many Christians look exactly the same. They are suffering from malnutrition because they never spend time reading, studying, and confessing the Word of God. I want to make this clear that the Bible is not just written for pastors and for preachers. The Bible is written for every believer. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. 1 Peter 2 verse 2, the Bible says, As newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. So, the Word of God has to be a priority in your life because every decision you make has to be filtered through the Word of God. Are you listening to me today? Not through the filter of your culture. Not through the filter of your uh, 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 family's opinions. The Bible says in, in, in Matthew chapter 13, um, when he talks to the Pharisees and he says, you hold on to your tradition and through that you neutralize the power of God's word. So your tradition, your culture, your beliefs can neutralize, make the power of God's word void in your life. So God's word has to have preeminence in your life. I mean, God is God because of his word. 
And the Bible says the word of God is exalted above the name of God. God himself submits to his word. If you're going to live a successful life, we have to get back to basics. And basics is you have to get back to your foundation. And your foundation, Jesus is the rock, he's the chief cornerstone. But the foundation we lay is through the apostles and prophets. I do understand that Ephesians chapter 2. But no other foundation can be laid than that which is or who is Jesus Christ. We build on that foundation, line upon line, precept upon precept. We build the word of God so that when the storms come, the winds blow, the rains descend, the house will stand because the man hears the word, the man does the word of God. If you are wordless, listen, you are powerless. If you are wordless, you are faithless because Romans 10 verse 7, it says, so then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 6, 11 verse 6, the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So you are not going to live a strong, overcoming, victorious life without the word of God as primary focus in your life. Listen. So your attention to God's word. Proverbs says, my son, give attention to my word. Incline your ear to my sayings. So, so the, the extent that you give God's word um, place in your life shows your commitment to see God's plan unfold in your life. Because we want easy. And we, this journey is we walk by faith. We please God by faith. We overcome by faith. Romans 14, 23 says, anything not of faith is sin. Faith is not a move. Faith is a way we live. We walk by faith and not by sight. We please God by faith. 1 John 5 verse 4, the Bible says, this is the victory of the overcup of the world, even our faith. Who is who believes? Uh, he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So that's where it starts. Your sentiment doesn't cause you to overcome. Your political viewpoint does not cause you to overcome. God does not watch over your opinion. He watches over His Word to perform it. God prospers His Word in your life. If His Word is not in your mouth, as I said this morning, there is nothing God can work with, and there is nothing the angels of God can work with. So when the Holy Spirit touches you, I said it this morning, He does two things. What? He, 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 he gets a hold of your tongue. He gives you vision. And he gets a hold of your tongue. He gets negativity out of your tongue. He changes your conversation. You, you're not going to see with the greatness of God if you have a negative conversation. You have to line up your conversation with God. You have to come into agreement with God. God's not going to come into agreement with you. Because God is. You never were. But God has been since the beginning of time. He is the great I am. So you have to align yourself with God. And that means you have to align yourself with the word of God. And you have to come in full agreement with God. If you want to see God fulfill his word in your life. You cannot be in partial agreement. 50% agreement. I said it in Johannesburg this morning. That would be like marrying a wife. And, I, and saying, well, I marry you, but I'm committed to you 50%. I'm sure she's going to look at you and say, oh, what about the other 50%? Yeah. Yeah. You can't follow God 50%. You can't be in agreement with God 50%. You cannot say, okay, God, I, 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 I'm committed to you, but I also am committed to my ancestral worship. Sorry, Jack, choose. Like Elijah said, how long will you hold between two opinions? If God is God, follow him. If not, then follow Baal. But you, 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 you are not going to get God to change. He says, I am the Lord God, I change not. You are not going to get God to be moved. You have to move. You have to change. You have to come in agreement. You have to align yourself with God and with God's word, my buddy. God's not moved by your intellect, by your opinion, by your so-called uh, uh, brilliantness. I mean, God's 50 million, trillion times more brilliant than you. And you use 7% of your brain, so give us a heavenly break. You're not that smart. You may be educated, but when you open your mouth, we hear you're not that smart. Because you make light of God's word. God and His word is one. So you have to decide where God's word fits into your life. 
Is it part of your belief or is it your belief? And that's why the world is in a mess. That's why the world is in a state of confusion. Because there's no basis of truth. Issues of the day define new truth. Things that were not relevant 50 years ago are now the basis of what people are shouting about. Because people have lost their foundation. They've moved away from God in the beginning. God created in the heavens and the earth. Then God said, let us, God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Elohim, make man in our own image after our own likeness. So when, you, when, you, when, 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 when God is not your basis of truth and the word, the foundation of your truth, you will be grappling around all the days of your life because whatever they're shouting about in America, you're going to start shouting about in South Africa. Whether it's relevant or irrelevant, you just get onto the emotional high because you're always on social media. You issue driven, you're not God driven. So you're going to have problems all the days of your life. Up and down, up and down, up and down, big up a yo-yo, ding bat Christian. It doesn't matter because you have no basis. You have no compass in your life. And my friend, if you are going to respect Jesus Christ, you have to respect His Word. Listen, it's very basic, I understand. But God cannot lead us outside of His Word. And God cannot lead us apart from His Word. God cannot ignore His Word because we will not walk in agreement with His Word. So the first thing you have to do, if you want to move on in life, before we even talk about the power of the Holy Ghost is you have to align yourself with God's Word. You have to build your life upon the Word of God. Every uh, conversation you have, you have to go filter it through the Word of God, the New Testament. Are you listening? Uh, I mean, people want, people want a move of God, but they, they're not grounded in the Word. So people can prophesy anything and you, you eat it like uh, uh, wheat pigs. Because you don't even know what the person says is not scriptural. You have to know the word. You have to read the Bible. I know it's basic. You have to read the Bible. So heaven gave us the Bible. Are you listening to me? Heaven gave us Jesus. Heaven gave us the Holy Ghost. We'll talk about that tonight and further on in the weeks that lie ahead. And heaven gave us the Word of God. And the basis of your relationship with God is the Word. No Word, no basis of relationship. Because your opinion will bring you into disagreement with God. So if you don't understand something, you have to see what the Bible says. Not a critic of a Bible, not brother to dad that has never done anything in his life trying to interpret the scripture. You have to read the Bible and interpret what God says in the word of God because that's your diet. So I'll say it again. If we could see spiritually, I'm sad to say it that many people... The balcony is empty, so let me pick that and the empty chair next to you. Many of you spiritually would look like those starving kids in Ethiopia because you are spiritually starved. Because you hardly ever go to church, you hardly ever go to a home cell, you hardly ever read your Bible, and you think you are going to live a victorious life. It's not going to work. You cannot take an underfed Ethiopian child and put him in a battle and expect him to defeat the Russian soldiers with the latest technology. It's not going to work. You have to feed him, feed him, feed him, strengthen him, feed him, feed him, feed him, strengthen him, get his muscles to work, feed him, feed him, feed him, feed him. Feed him strengthening, get his muscles to work, teach him about the war, and then you send him to the, 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 the front lines. That's why many people, their faith is not working because they have no substance for faith.